And now it's two minutes past three. It's time for afternoon theatre. All right, Ben. Come on, boy. Out here. Grab up. Hello. Harriet. How'd it go? Oh, tons better. Still on a liquid diet, but... Yeah, we're going to have some consolation. Yes, Ben's having his supper right now. I didn't forget. Look, and don't worry. Of course I'll be at Gatwick tomorrow. I'm okay now. It's just a a 24-hour bug. Yeah, sure. Give my love to Gay Perry and don't do anything I wouldn't do. Bye. Okay, okay, belt up, Ben. Oh. Oh, hello there. Uh, Long time no see. You You better come in. It's just me and the hound, I'm afraid. Oh, for God's sake, dog! Harriet insisted we had him. We're pretty isolated here. And, of course, all the bits we keep buying. Investments against the rainy day when the books stop selling. You never know in this game. Now then, what should it be? Gin, whiskey, vodka, campari? And if it's not too much to ask, what exactly are you... (gasps) Huh? Long Time No See by Joan Sadler with Michael McStay as Inspector Burgess and Jean Trend as Harriet Bell. Long Time No See. Excuse me, uh, Mrs Bell? Harriet Bell? Yes? I'm Inspector Burgess. I've a car. Oh, thank you. I can't believe... I was only speaking to him a few hours ago. I'm sorry, Mrs. Bell. What? Through here? It wasn't raining in Paris. I think it's only a shower. My car's just there. Shall we make a dash for it? What time did you speak to him? Last night, soon after ten. The, the dog. Oh, he's all right. He was shut in the kitchen. Did he say he was expecting anyone? Alan? No. He should have been in Paris with me. It hadn't been for a stupid tummy bug. How did you... Who found him? The couple who worked for you, the, the Pollacks, when they came to the house this morning. He'd been dead some time, before midnight, certainly. How? We haven't found the weapon. We're searching. It was a knife. How long have you been living at Longfield? Six months. We bought the house in March. It's pretty isolated. Ideal, it seemed, for us. We write thrillers in collaboration. (laughs) Yes. My wife and I are Harriet Allen fans. We've read them all. Really? Thank you. Who else knew you in Paris alone? The Pollocks, of course, and our agent. That's all? To my knowledge... And there's Alan, of course. Is there anyone who might have had a, a grievance against your husband? You think it was planned? How long had you been married? Ten years. And there was no one, I'd swear, in that time. How about before? He never said much about before, except it hadn't been easy. When did his stomach upset start? Wednesday evening. Something he ate? It's possible. He said a bug. When you spoke? Yes. What else? Oh, he was feeling better. Certain he'd be all right to pick me up at Gatwick this evening. Where are we going? I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to identify the mortuary at Barston. No idea of the number, I suppose. Registration letter? No, of course not. OK, I'll pass it on. Thanks, dear. Morning, Inspector. Who was that? Policewoman Dorothy Weeks. 
Lives in Longfield Village and off duty on Thursday night. Overtook a light-coloured mini near the back gate of the Bell's house around nine. Thought it might have been about to pull off on the verge or turn in. Didn't register much at the time. Thought we should know, just in case. Ah. Oh, you'll follow it up? Sure. Oh, and the mm. checkout on Alan Bell has come through. Already? Positive, too, here. Manslaughter charge, 1967. Hmm. <clears throat> Two years suspended. Ah. 67, that's some years back. Still, you never know. I want the details. Underway. I'm leaning on them. Manslaughter. Hmm. A rough boy, maybe, Mr. Bell. How's the search? Nothing yet. The gardener chap went berserk when we went through his flower beds. My God, he's a funny one. Pollack. German, I'd say. Mrs. Pollack? That's right. Inspector Burgess. Oh, or, or perhaps you'd better come in. Hmm. Though my husband and I told the young policeman yesterday the little we know. Oh, do sit down. <laughs> Poor Mr. Bell. It's a terrible thing. In the prime of life, really. I understand it was you and your husband who found him. Well, just me, actually. Ernest went straight to the garden like he always does. Oh, I can't get it out of my mind. The dog had been sick, and worse, all over my kitchen. The downstairs lights were still on. And when I looked in that lounge... Did you call us immediately? Well, I called my husband first. I mean, I was knocked all of a heap. It, it was horrible. Yes. Uh, it must have been most unpleasant for you. Oh, this is a charming little place. Oh, it used to be a forester's cottage. Of course, it goes with a job. Not too far from the house. Not too close. How close? Five minutes or so? Oh, about that. By the path through the wood. We normally take the long way round through the village. You don't get the mud. Well, you go on foot? Lord, no. We've both got bikes. Have you seen Mrs. Bell this morning? No. I give her a ring. We don't work over there Saturdays. But, of course, if there'd been anything we could do, I... You were with the previous owners? The Lamberts. That's right. All of 28 years, they moved to Spain for the sunshine. Ah. Laura? Yes? Oh, there's so many beans out there. <clears throat> Will you be freezing today? Oh, my husband, Inspector Burgess. We said yesterday all we knew. Yes, we appreciate that. Uh, just a few odd points, Mr. Pollack. Oh, shoes off then, Ernest. How was Mr. Bell when you saw him on Thursday? Well, like we've already said. Complained of stomach pains and didn't want to eat. Did you see him that day, Mr. Pollack? Just a few minutes in the morning. What about? The tomatoes. He wanted them up. Did he know much about gardening? My husband worked that garden for 28 years and the Lamberts never once had cause for complaint. He complained? He... He criticised sometimes. Where do you keep your tools? Back of the house. Used to be a stable. And I'll tell you something. I made all those tool racks myself. You know, then, if anything was missing. They asked yesterday. I showed them nothing is missing. Everything is in its place. You're not from this part of the world, Mr. Pollack. I was born in Vienna. Ernest lost all his family at Auschwitz. There was an internment camp here at the end of the war. But I am British now. I have my papers. Mrs. Pollack, did you see Mr. Bell before you left? Just briefly, about five. He said he thought a good night's rest had put him right. Did he say anything about uh, expecting a visitor? By rights, he should have been in Paris with her. But he wasn't. He was at home. I'm wondering if he invited anyone over for company. Not to my knowledge. Where were you both on Thursday evening? Here at home. All the evening? Well... Like we always are every evening. Did you see or hear anything unusual? No, nothing at all. <laughs> From what you've seen of the Bells, would you say the marriage was a happy one? They work very hard. I couldn't really give an opinion. Made any friends here in Longfield? The Morgans went to dinner there once. Mr Bell did the cooking, but not the washing up after. <laughs> any guests to stay? Colonel Ferguson come for a night. He's Mrs Bell's uncle. At least she calls him uncle. 
He used to live round this way. He knew the Lamberts quite well. well. How about people calling in? For drinks, maybe? No. They kept themselves to themselves. And the, uh, the Morgans who came to dinner, who are they? Old Vicarage. That white house by the pond. He's a naval commander, retired. Let me top you up, Inspector. Oh, thank you. An old salt doesn't like drinking alone. Yes, the wife and I had dinner up there with them once. Um, when was it, Hilda? July the 9th, a Wednesday. He cooked a um, goulash or something. And very good it was, too. We invited them back, of course, but there was always some excuse. They're too busy, I suppose, all those books. Oh, what made him invite you? <laughs> Wanted to pick my brains, eh, Hilda? He was quite frank about it. New thriller was to be about a drug smuggling ring. Run by an old naval type like myself. We'll dedicate it to you, he said. Why, are you au fait with drug smuggling? Well, my father could have told him a few tales about the Yangtze run years ago. <laughs> Opium, of course, those days. Not quite what they were after. How long have you been living here in Longfield? Fifteen years. Smashing place. Lovely country, not too far from the sea. Well, do you know Colonel Ferguson? The Lamberts used to live round this way, a um, friend of theirs. Charles Ferguson? Oh. Of course, splendid chap. DSO. Moved away. When was it, Hilda? 78, dear. Late October. You seen him since? No, alas. Though it was through him, I believe, the Bells bought the house. She's his niece, or something. Servant officer? Retired, like yours truly. Making the most of a pension, what? And where's he living now? <laughs> no idea. Dare say Harriet could tell you. Don't suppose we'll ever get that dedication now. <laughs> Charles Ferguson, two S's, was a friend of my mother's. All right, then. I just call him uncle, and perhaps because I've no other relatives. It was through him, in fact, we heard of the house. Has he been down? Just for a night, back in June. He and Alan didn't hit it off very well. Oh, how was that? Oh, Fergie's very much the old soldier. His flat's full of war trophies, guns, medals, and so on. Knives? Possibly. Yes, Why? Not your husband seen? Alan was a pacifist. Quite aggressively so when it came to an argument. Oh, where's he living now? Fergie? Tufnell Park. As a matter of fact, he's coming to stay for a bit, till I get adjusted. How did you meet your husband? Through our agent. We'd both been clients of hers for some time without much success. She suggested collaboration, thought we might spark off something. <laughs> and you certainly did. <laughs> Death by arrangement, our first, really made us... Heaven knows how many reprints, the film... Must be ten years now. Ten years next March. We were married on publication day. A successful partnership. Yes. In every way? Well, marriage-wise, it was second time for us both. You'd think you'd have learnt the snags, but we'd quarrel quite violently sometimes. Oh, what about? Oh, petty things. Alan's grammar, his spelling... The fact the books were published under a woman's name, although the plots were mainly all his. Your agent, can I get in touch? Well, she was off to New York when I spoke to her on Wednesday. Ah. How well do you know the Morgans? Hardly at all. And they came here to dinner once. Alan had a hunch the commander knew a thing or two about smuggling. Any reason? Nothing really specific. What does that mean? Alan was a writer... Over-imaginative, exaggerating things, everyone a potential criminal. Well, that's possibly so. Where was he from? Oh, didn't you know? Boston, only eight miles away, where his brothers and sisters still live, all five of them and their offspring. Have you met him? He preferred not, so I didn't insist. I just know there's a sister, Beatty, who lives on the Hillcrest estate. Beatty Fuller, I think. Ever speak about his first wife? He told me her name was Elaine. Did you have set working hours? We worked separate rooms every morning till one. Often I'd go on in the afternoon, but since we've been living here, Alan's preferred to garden. Well, you certainly got a superb garden here. No credit to him. Ernest even designed it, I'm told. But Alan found it therapeutic to mess about with plants and things. Sometimes talked about doing a gardening book. By Alan Bell? Oh, of course. I'm no gardener. Would you know what this is? I've seen Ernest use one. A pruning knife. We found it in your drinks cupboard here. It's a strange place for a pruning knife. Well, perhaps Alan bought it in from the garden. He could be quite absent-minded. Well, there's nothing missing from your tool shed. But where else could it come from? I don't know. Would he need it for uh, 
Protection, perhaps. A knife? Oh, surely not. He had Ben. Had your husband any other interests? He liked to cook when he was in the mood. He worked in a hotel kitchen at one time. Oh, when was this? Oh, before we met, when we were both writing solo. I'd like to have a look at his room while I'm here. Of course. Ah! All right, Ben. Stay there. You've checked, I suppose, to see if anything's missing. Well, nothing, I'm sure. Do you know anyone with a mini, white, or maybe light grey or fawn? Ernest has got a mini. Light grey? Why? He might have popped over here on Thursday evening. I wouldn't have thought so. This is his room. As you see, tidiness wasn't one of his virtues, and I haven't the heart yet. All right, Ben! Excuse me. Louie, come in, can't you? Oh, Sharon, get his blanket and shove it over the cage. And turn that damn noise off. It's not proper. Hello? Harriet Bell? Oh, this is Beatty here, Beatty Fuller. <laughs> That's right. Oh, shattered. Why, well, Alan was my big brother. I worshipped him as a kid. While he was in those days. Never dreamt he'd hit the big time. Not that we've seen much of him since he did. I, it's, uh, it's about the funeral. I see. Well, when you do, perhaps you'd let me know. Fuller. That's right. We're in the book. OK, Harriet. Uh, of course. Well, as you wish. Well, goodbye, then. Ice cold, she sounded. No flowers. He wouldn't have wanted it. What she know about him? He used to grow flowers as a boy. Buy the packets out of his own pocket money. Alan's the one with green fingers, Dad always said. Pity he turned out such a sod. Mrs Bell? Ben, all right. I'm off now. If you'd leave everything as it is in his room... Yes, of course. His sister Beatty just rang about the funeral. Oh, we'll let you know as soon as possible. Oh, and Donald Stoner, a friend of your husband's? Stoner means nothing to me. Uh, 23 Harbourview Road, Barston. I found this letter addressed to him on his desk. Not much of a letter. But to the point. Nothing doing A.B. Donald Stoner. Sorry, can't help you at all. Mrs Stoner? Yes? Inspector Burgess. I see. Perhaps you'd better come in. Thank you. Is your husband home? No. <laughs> He's linesman for Barston Reserves. Uh, they're playing an away match today. What time will he be back? Oh, late. After ten, I expect. What does your husband do for a living? Donald's manager of Flynn's Carpets in Broad Street. Saturday's off. Every other one. Uh, excuse me for a moment. Martin! Turn it down a bit, love. I've got a visitor. <laughs> My younger boy... He starts at Kent University soon. The older one's working in London. Do sit down. Now, Mrs Stoner, I, I think you know why I'm here. I assume it's to do with him. His death, Alan Bell. What was the relationship between him and your husband? Him and Don? None. But your husband knew him. Not to my knowledge. You're sure? Well, he's never mentioned his name. Is he local? Don. He was born in this house. How long have you been married? Twelve years. So your sons... Are by my first marriage. <laughs> Mrs Stoner, if your husband didn't know Alan Bell, why weren't you surprised to see me? thought you'd come to see me. <laughs> Not that there's much I could tell you about him after all these years. Oh, you're Elaine. That's right. They're Alan's boys. 
how long since the marriage broke up? 17 years. You knew he'd come to live at Longfield. News gets around. Do you ever feel the urge to go and see him? Why? He's nothing to me anymore. He was successful and rich. You might feel he owed you something, you and the boys. After all, he's their father. Some father. Mrs. Stoner, would you know of anyone who might have had a grudge against Alan Bell? Someone back in his past here in Boston? Only me. Or your husband, perhaps. I've said he didn't know Alan. To the best of your knowledge. Uh, 1967. Were you in touch with Alan Bell at that time? I never heard a word since the day he left me in May 1965. Will your husband be home tomorrow? Tomorrow's Sunday. In the morning? We usually gardens till opening time, weather permitting. I'll be calling round before opening time. Ice? Please. It's good to have you here, Fergie. It's what uncles are for, sweetie. Now, how'd it go in Paris? Rather well. Thanks for your good wishes. Someone called Henri Benoit has translated our first three in one volume. La Rive seemed delighted. Ah. <laughs> and to end like this. There. Thanks. Harriet, as a friend, wasn't it ending anyway? The writing. Perhaps. We'd started to live on our earlier reputation, though Alan refused to accept. And not just the books. He wasn't easy, but... This has been quite shattering. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Garden looks in good nick. Pollack still with you? Of course. How'd he get on with Alan? Oh, all right. They argued a lot. Poor Ernest, he gets so worked up about his garden. And I'll tell you something. I planted those eucas, tended them like children. You don't water eucas. Who else round here knew he was in the house alone? Only Ernest and Dora, I'm sure. You're not suggesting. Oh, no, it's ludicrous. I'll tell you something. Five years ago, Ernest Pollack nearly killed Clive Lambert. Oh, Ernest, can't you give it a rest? Oh, I thought you wanted a shelf put up here. I've been asking two years for a shelf put up there, but not now. I'm sorry. I'm not myself. Nor am I myself. Police trampling over my garden coming here with their cold eyes, their questions. I just wish you hadn't lied. Ernest, where were you that evening? Where did you go? For a ride on my bike, that's all. You know, two nights running now you've got up in the night. So I drink too much. And left the bathroom light on. What's on your mind? Has he been needling you again? Oh, he always needles me, cocky so-and-so, telling me my job. His greenhouse, his shrubs, his yuccas. Me, I planted those yuccas, treated them like children. You get too worked up, love. It's only a garden. Only, only you know nothing. My brains he picks for his book. What book? Every time he picks faults is to find out how. Figs and grapevines and melons and cordon peaches. A gardening book? Him? It's finished. He told me. The first... What is it? Um, a draft. Except for the pictures. Ernest, you went over there that evening? Maybe. To see my garden. It was too dark for the garden. To see him. About this book. My name somewhere, that's all. Some recognition for my knowledge he steals. In any case, someone was there already. You saw someone no, else? No, no, it, it was dark. I was at the side of the house... I heard his voice. Hello there. Long time no see. Better come in. What did he give a name? Ernest. <laughs> Ernest, try and remember. Oh, there was an owl, the, the dog barking inside, but no, no, no name. Oh, you should tell them. It must mean something. Tell the inspector. No, Dora. I tell them nothing. Nor you. Understand? We have said enough. Harriet? Oh, Henry here. Yeah? Henry Morgan. We were wondering if you care to come over this evening for a meal. Hilda thought it might do you good. Make a break. He is? Oh, so both of you come. 
No, of course, no problem at all. We'll look forward to it. Around uh, seven? Fine. And if there's anything we can do to help, I hope you will. Goodbye. Who's both of you? The Colonel's there with her uncle. Oh, Henry, I wish you hadn't. Why ever not? Can't be rude. Well, I don't trust the man. There's something shady about him. My dear old girl, nothing shady about the Colonel. I always felt you and he were up to something. Clive Lambert, too. You imagine things, Hilda. Not to worry. Well, I do worry. I have for some time. Life seems almost too good to be true, materially. Oh, so how about smoked salmon for starters and uh, I'll get a brace of pheasant. Mrs. Bell? Oh, I, I do apologise. You're just going out. Only to the Morgans. This is Charles Ferguson, Inspector Burgess. How do you know? How do you know? I'll bring the car round, shall I, Harriet? Thanks. Quiet, Ben. Mrs. Bell, we've had the post-mortem result. Uh, your husband had had an excellent meal not long before he died. No indication at all of a stomach upset. So, it was an excuse not to come. Is that what you thought? Not till this moment. But I realise now, as I put the phone down, I'm almost sure I heard our front doorbell ring. You probably did, Mrs. Bell. It seems likely your husband had a rendezvous that night with his killer. Good night to you. What did he want? Nothing, really. Just routine, as they say. Harriet, my dear, can't you take I'm a little... I'm sorry, more? Hilda. It's delicious, but... Uh, may um... I? Just a tiny piece more. Of course. <laughs> Hasn't been much of a summer, has it, in spite of the forecast? <laughs> Lucky old Lambert's to be where the sun shines. Do you hear from them? Oh, just the odd card. And they are odd, aren't they, Henry? I believe Clive only remembers to write when he's had a glass or two. Solamente nos requerida después de tomar un vaso de vino. Well, you speak Spanish. <laughs> oh, and get by, that's all. Oh, don't be modest. Fergie tells me Ernest nearly killed Clive Lambert a few years ago. It was an accident. Everyone agreed. I didn't. A storm in a teacup. What happened? And he slipped. Said he slipped. With the pruning knife. Fourteen stitches, blood everywhere. What a do. And it's past history now. Harriet's glass, Henry. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Still, accident or not, he's a lucky man to be alive for the sunshine. Thank you. I wonder if your inspector friend knows. Might be worth a mention. Been up again tonight, I see. Colonel, you? Never known to say no. I wouldn't have thought you could see our place from here. <gasps> you can with a telescope, my dear. Henry's toy, three and a half inch lens. You can see for miles, can't you, Henry? I don't think I'm spying, of course. Bird watching, mainly. Pity you weren't looking out Thursday night. Yeah, it's too dark, I'm afraid. Not even a moon. Besides, we were we were glued to the box, weren't we, Hilda? I believe we were. Who's the trifle? Uh, well, not for me, but um, fetch the cigars while you're up. Fergie, not so fast. Sorry. Should have said no to that second cognac. You missed the lane. You'll have to go the long way round. That's OK. I know my long field. Well, they were certainly very hospitable. And the whole place, surprisingly, sumptuous. It makes you wonder. Wonder what? You know, Alan saw Henry once with a Spanish... What, Bloody cyclist this time of night. And no damn lights either. I believe it was Ernest. Pity I missed them. Strange. Cycling at midnight. You were saying? About Henry? Oh, yes. It was back in June. Alan didn't sleep very well. Sometimes took a walk around dawn. And there was this enormous lorry transport his Gonzales in a lay-by on the Felsted Bypass. And Henry with the driver. Did they see him? He didn't think so. Too engrossed in each other. This could be how he gets his rum and cigars. If it was, Henry. Well, he speaks Spanish. We had them over for a meal soon after. Alan tried hard to pump him about it, but nothing doing. And second cognac or not, here we are. You left the lights on up there. I did not. Fergie, it's Alan's room. How about this casserole thing, Hilda? Oh, just leave it to soak. The colonel certainly did everything justice. Mm, the pig. Oh, compliment to your cuisine, old fruit. No, I never liked the man. 
Why you had to invite oh, him? Oh, not again. He was there with Harriet. I, I had to. Henry, I've never asked any questions. Best not. Be like the three monkeys. You know, but we've got this lovely place, everything and more we could wish for. Like a plot in the graveyard? Oh, look, you're 65. You're too old for dangerous games. You've had enough excitement in your life. Never. I'll die any way you like, but not from boredom. And worry not. No one has ever suspected. Alan Bell did. Nonsense. Looking for a plot, that's all. In the graveyard? God, these saucepans. We really must get ourselves a machine. Henry, where were you Thursday night? Watching telly with you. That's the scene. And don't forget it. I'll have that bit when you're finished. Dom. Have the lot. There's an article on him inside. On who? Your late husband, of course. The great Alan Bell. Uh, I'll have a go at that back edge before he gets on top of me. Aren't you going to shave? Not yet. What's for din? Roast pork. Or perhaps you cut a cabbage. Will do. You'll be having a visitor this morning. I will. A police inspector came yesterday. Seemed to think you knew Alan. What made him think that? No idea. I told him you didn't. So why is he coming? Today's Sunday. Maybe he didn't believe me. I think I'll show you. Don, Thursday night, had something happened? How do you mean? After training. When you came in, you, you looked so strange. Too much wallop, that's all. You haven't ever been over to Longfield. Why the hell should I? He was rich. The boys are his. The money. <laughs> Wouldn't do me much good if I had. I just read in the article. Mean as blazes he was. As you know, it wasn't tidy before. In fact, if the lights hadn't been on... You haven't touched anything. I know the rules, Inspector. Other than switching them off. How about the dog? Shut up in the lounge. Though I'd have sworn I'd left all the downstairs doors open. The house was locked? Of course. Windows? It was a warm evening. I'd left a small one open for Ben. Anything of value up here? The paperweights, the little antique clock, the radio, all still here. Where's Colonel Ferguson? Walked in for the ten o'clock service. Ah, uh, that's his Mercedes in front. Yes. Weaver Rover. At least Alan had. I don't drive. How did you get up to Gatwick? Ernest drove me, reluctantly. He hated leaving his garden. Who else knew you were at the Morgans? I told Dora, en card in Malheur. She has keys to the house? Yes. Did you see anyone on your way to or from their place? On our way home, there was a man on a bicycle. I'm almost certain it was Ernest. Hmm. Oh, it's a pity I missed the colonel. I'd have liked a word with him. Perhaps you'd ask him to call in at the station tomorrow. You'd better give me a ring first, and you know the number. My husband's in the garden. I've said you're coming. Dom! That's a fair-sized bit of ground you got there. Dom's quite a king gardener. Like your first husband. Alan? Really? I didn't know that. Of course, we only had a flat then over more as the greengrocers. Not even a window box. Here in Boston? That's right. Oh, Dom... Inspector Burgess. Oh. <coughs> if you'll excuse me, we have roast on Sunday. <laughs> ah, good match yesterday. So so. Mm. I used to play up to ten years ago. Devon Police. Mr. Stoner, how well did you know Alan Bell? I didn't know Alan Bell. Well, you never met him or corresponded. Why should I? Well, you married his ex-wife. The two boys are his. You might. Uh, you might feel he owed you something, especially after he became rich and famous. I suppose I might, but I didn't. Well, you're a local chap. Must be around the same age. Didn't you know him at school? Play football together? It's not a very big town. Big enough. 15,000. Quite a few schools. You're in carpets, your wife says. Always been your line? For the last 14 years. And before? I was trained as a butcher. My father had a shop in Broad Street. You've always lived in Boston? Most always. Where else? Oh, around Leeds, 
Oxford, Bristol. Uh, what made you come back? Dad died in 67. Mother had a spell of depression. There was this carpet job going here. I, I'd done a bit of laying, so I applied and, and got it. How did you meet your wife? At a club called The Unattached. I joined when I lost Mother. We married a few months later. When was this? 68. How old were the boys? Four and six. Two growing lads. Quite an undertaking. Not a highly paid job. Not too bad with commission. and The house is mine. We've managed. That's your car outside, the uh, yellow Ford? Yes. Where were you Thursday evening? Thursday's practice night for the team. You were with them? Of course. Till what time? I got home about ten or half past. We usually have a pint after. Where? In a pub. What pub? The anchor, usually. I'm asking about Thursday night. The anchor? And your wife? Where was she? Here, at home. Like she always is of a night. Mr Stoner, in Alan Bell's study there was an envelope addressed to you. A note inside. Nothing doing. What were you after? What did you want from Alan Bell? Nothing. I don't understand. I didn't know him. We'll want a better explanation than that, Mr Stoner. Think about it. We'll be in touch again. Enjoy your roast. Lovely text that sermon had. About the fields and the grass. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of a field, he flourishes. For the wind passes over and is gone. Oh, you know it. In the internment camp, I learned all the psalms. It helped my English and made something to do. Religion can be a comfort. Good congregation tonight. I suppose people hoped she'd be here. Yes, a full church. And we sat in our row alone. I didn't notice. I tell you, when there is trouble, the fremde ist immer verdetig. Ernest, you went over there last night, to the house, while they were over the Morgans, didn't you? Just to see no one was hanging around. So why take their keys? Inspector, a reporter from the local says you promised a statement. Oh, hell, so I did. Uh, I'll be with him in two minutes. I'll, I'll concoct something and hope I sound confident. Okay. Oh, and Charlie, anything on the search? Not yet. We've covered grounds, woods, and right across to the river. Pollack's garden? Too true. Nothing. Call it off, sir. Now, I have a feeling now that until we find the killer, we aren't going to find the weapon. Look, how about the manslaughter charge? I've been on to them. Weekend backlog of work. Always a good excuse. <laughs> yeah, I've used it myself. I'll keep pressing. Sure. Hello, Henry. Ferguson here, on my way to see the great Burgess. I'd rather not, but it might look bad if I refused. Seen you? Why? You bet I'll be discreet. I hope you were. Look, I'd like to see you for five minutes sans Hilda. Oh, that's great. Oh, I won't say now. Walls have ears. Oh, an hour at the most. See you, Henry. Hasta la vista. Ah, Colonel Ferguson. I'm sorry to keep you. Lovely morning again. It is indeed. Good to be alive. Sit down. Uh, cigarette? <laughs> Thanks. Won't say no. Well, nice of you to call in. Harriet said you wanted a word. Always pleased to cooperate. How long have you known Mrs. Bell? Heavens, hate to think I knew her mother. And her first husband, I suppose. Uh, not really. It was a very brief marriage. Oh, divorce? A killed in a car accident. She hasn't said. How long ago? Must be, oh, all of 15 years. Just before I was posted to Cyprus. She was driving. Never driven since. That's why it's useful for her just now to have me around. I'm sure. Uh, th though, of course, Ernest drives and uh, took her up to Gatwick on Thursday. Uh, perhaps, but she's safer with me. Uh, Pollack's unstable. Oh? Violent, too, on occasion. Well, can you name one? Well, since you ask, he attacked Clive Lambert with a pruning knife five years ago. Fourteen stitches, nearly severed an artery. Oh, for what reason? Over the roses. Clive criticised the way he was pruning them. What, just, just over roses? Uh, nothing just about that garden to Pollack. Oh, were there charges? Not on your life. People bend over backwards to make allowances for the man, but I know the type. Vicious. 
paranoiac, murderous. Uh, Mr. Spell mentioned a man on a bicycle Saturday night. Mm, that was him, and no lights. Nearly mowed him down. And what do we find five minutes later? Alan's room broken into. C- Colonel, tell me, how was it with the bells? Oh, so so. Marriage of convenience, I always felt. Literary convenience. I understand you were instrumental in them acquiring Longfield mm, House. That's right. Mm. Sort of thing Harriet was looking for. Directly I knew the Lamberts were putting it on the market, I let her know. You're in property? I dabble now and then, help a friend. You weren't living in Longfield at the time? No, but I kept in touch. Known Clive years. What was his line? Oh, antiques, mainly. Well, why did he go to Spain? Oh, for the sunshine. As simple as that. And how about the Morgans? Keep in touch with them? No. Always meant to, of course, but... Did you were close friends when you lived here? Oh, hardly close. Things in common, that's all. Couple of ex-servicemen. Rubbing along on a pension. As best we can. Nice Mercedes you run? A little inheritance. Where were you on Thursday evening? At home. The Tufnell Park? Correct. Alone? I live alone. Grenville Court. Mrs Bell refers to you as uncle. Mm, was a little thing between us. She's no relatives. A close relationship? I'm fond of her. I like to think it's reciprocated. How did you get on with her husband? Oh, I couldn't stick him. He was opinionated, bumptious, argumentative, sneered at all the old values. Made out he was a pacifist and one of the most aggressive types I've ever encountered. You knew him well. Oh, not very, but I'm a good judge of character. I've met chaps like him. Always land up in trouble. Do you plan to stay long with Mrs. Bell? Oh, as long as she needs me. At least until this business is cleared up. And for my money, Pollack's your man. Oh, you think? Oh, he's a kraut. Started two world wars. Stop at nothing. He's Austrian. All the same, my dear chap, all the same. I've had experience. Been POW and escaped. Uh, That was a long time ago. Not for me. (laughs) Yes, well, uh... well, thank you, Colonel. Not at all. (laughs) Glad to help. Goodbye. I'm working, I tell you. I have my schedule. Won't keep you long, Mr. Pollock. You don't leave a garden. My wife will wonder where I am. Mrs. Bell? Was that Ernest in the police car? Yes, Dora. He's just gone down to help them. But why? He's done nothing. He was home with me all that evening. I'd swear it. And Saturday? Did he come here on Saturday night? No. Of course not. While we were out. At least, well, maybe to keep an eye, knowing What did he want from my husband's room? I don't know. Tell me. In any case, it's no crime. What isn't, Dora? I... I think he only wanted to read the book. Book? Mr. Bell's gardening book. Excuse me, Inspector. Yes? We've got Pollock outside. I'll let him cool his heels for a bit. Anything yet on Stoner? Mm, he and Alan Bell were in the same class at Eastern Road Primary School. <laughs> well, that's really going back. You're checking out Thursday evening. Working on it. Seems he left the anchor soon after 8.30. Did he now? Burgess? Oh, Mrs. Bell, hello. Really? And and you yourself didn't even know? <laughs> Just to read it? Well, well. I will see. Thanks. Yes, of course. Goodbye. There we are. The best of Montalado. <laughs> God bless Ramos. Ah. What's it all about? <laughs> Alan Bell spotted the June delivery. Even got the name on the lorry. Out walking at dawn. Couldn't sleep. Pure chance. Harriet told me Saturday. Oh, well. Dead men tell no tales. Oh, their wives can. And listen, something else. Clive rang Thursday night in a panic. There's a marked item in the new batch. Pinched and possibly traceable. I'm to hold on till he gives the green light. Still, all adds a bit of spice, I suppose. Spice be damned. We're not in this for kicks. We close down then. At least till the boys in blue depart. He's a ferret, that Burgess. Well, carry on. Talk about cooling his heels. All right, send him in now. In here. Ah, Mr. Pollock. 
over an hour I have been here. It worked to do in my garden, and nothing I have done. But just because I am a stranger and don't speak your language too well. Oh, I'd like to speak German as well as you speak English. Uh, Sit down. I, I am not German. I was born in Vienna. Cigarette? I don't smoke. How long have you been a gardener? Since I was 16. I have no other trade. What made the Lamberts go to Spain? For the sunshine, they told us. Antique dealers, I understand. Antiques, jewels and all that. You had quite a stretch with them. <laughs> Twenty-eight years. And no troubles? They left the garden to me. It was mine. Other than pruning the roses? Wh- who told you? It-, it was an accident. Everyone knew. Mr. Lambert tried to take the knife from my hands. I, I slipped on the wet grass. It's been raining. It was the dew, a, a heavy dew. It wasn't your fault, his wife said. Forget it. Put it out of your mind. Ever pop back to the house of an evening? Have a look at the garden? No, I have my own garden to do at the cottage. Last Thursday, did you drive across for some reason? Of course not. In any case, I never drive to the house. You use your bicycle? Uh, Yes. Is that where you were cycling from, Saturday night? No, I, I was home. Mr. Pollack, you were seen on your bike around midnight. I'm asking... Had you been to Longfield House? I have told you, no, I was home. I am always home in the evening. You have the keys to the house, someone got in, someone knew the dog, left the lights on in Alan Bell's room. Are you forgetful about lights? You had none on your bicycle? I, I don't know, you you speak too fast. Mr. Pollack, huh? someone went to Alan Bell's room on Saturday night. We think it was you. Was it you, yes or no? No, I was home with my wife. She will tell you, like I always am, every evening. The uh, gardening book he was writing. Who was writing? Alan Bell. Did he ask your help with it? I don't know about the book. He he tells me nothing. Do you recognise this? It's a knife. Pruning knife. Yours? How can it be? I showed the young policeman everything there, everything in its place. Did you leave it at Longfield House? Is that the reason you went back there Saturday night? I told you, I I didn't go there Saturday night. I don't know this knife. I work as a gardener. I I do the work I am paid for. I never go in the house. The house isn't my place. My place is the garden. And this is a gardening knife, Mr. Pollock. It must belong to another person. That is all I can say. Everything is there. I showed the policeman everything in its place. What's your car? A car? Make. Yeah, I'm a mini. Colour? Uh, uh, light grey. Uh, and I have my licence, my MOT, all my papers. Why do you question me like this? Because I think you're lying. I think you drove to Longfield House the night Alan Bell was murdered. No, 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 it's not true. I never drive at night, only walk or ride my bicycle. So you walked there, rode your bike? No, I was with my wife. Ask her, look, why should I want him dead? He was my bread and butter. So was Clive Lambert. That was an accident, I tell you. I slipped. The colonel should have said he was there. Yes. All right, then. That's it. I may go. We'll know where to find you when we want you again. In your garden. Yeah? You'd sign these sometime. Oh, sure. And, uh, Charlie, would you get me the address of a Mrs. Beatty Fuller on the, uh, Hillcrest Estate? Alan was my big brother, Inspector. I tell you, this has been a terrible blow. Oh, Bluey, pack it in. Well, not that we've seen much of him the last 15 years. Still, he made it, and good luck to him, poor old lad. Mrs. Fuller, how well did he know Donald Stoner? Tom? Well, when they were kids. He used to come to our house every day after school, almost like brothers they were. Then he got the scholarship and, well, you know how it is. Old Mr Stoner used to have the butcher shop in Broad Street. <laughs> A bit toffy nose they were. <laughs> when he married Elaine, did he know she'd been Alan's first wife? Sure. I went to the wedding. Elaine and I always kept in touch. Why did her marriage to Alan break up? It's something to do with the writing. He needed to be free, so he said. Have either of them contacted him since he came to live over at Longfield? I wouldn't know. And the sons? Steve's in London. Hardly comes home anymore. Got a lot of Alan in him, Elaine says. 
The other one's a bit of a dreamer. Wants to be a writer too, I believe. Did he keep in touch at all after he left the town? He wrote, now and then. To you? Yeah. We used to be close once. He, uh, he had a tough time for a bit, I believe. Well, it wasn't easy. And what did he do? Oh, all sorts of jobs to keep going. Milkman, hotel kitchen, <laughs> Father Christmas one year. Ever ask you for money? Well, once or twice. I, I sent what I could. Uh, February 67. He was in bad trouble. Oh, I wondered if you might know. Well, he didn't mean it. It was an accident, a fight, uh, over a gambling debt. How about his letters? Have you kept them? Oh, I believe there's one or two around somewhere. It might help me if I could read them. I'll return them, of course. Oh, I'll see what I can find. Mr Pollock, hello there. Long time no see. Long time no see. What'll it be, sir? Uh, oh, uh, a whiskey, please. Sir, uh, we'd better make it a double, sir. Certainly, sir. Indeed. It looks as if they're under something. Narrowing their uh, investigation, they say. Yeah, pretty confident this Inspector Burrows is sounded. My sister works down the police canteen and she says they've got a very good idea who it is. Convinced their man's still in the neighbourhood? Yeah, lights left on in the house on Sunday night. By some mystery visitor. Likely to make an arrest pretty soon. No one thing. Wouldn't want to be an issue. <laughs> oh, Mr Pollock. One double, sir. Uh, pound and tuppence. Hey, watch it, mister. Oh, it's all done, my dress. All right, Blow. Don't get your clock, miss. See who it was? The gardener up at Longfield. I got the invoice this morning. In 15 yards of Brentford Court stair carpet in Bahama Green. Yes, it should be in any day, madam. I will indeed. Goodbye. Sorry, Inspector, you were saying? You told me you had a few drinks with the team after Thursday night practice, Mr Stoner. That's right. Well, no one remembers seeing you in the anchor after you bought a round of drinks at uh, 8.30. Someone said once I was the sort of chap no one ever remembers. A pity. How long does it take you to get from the anchor to Harbourview Road? It depends. Ten minutes, a quarter of an hour? I've never timed it. So between uh, 8.30 and, say, 10.15, when you got home, where were you? In the public bar of the anchor. How's business? Not wonderful. We've had to cut down on staff. I have to go out laying myself from time to time. What did you want from Alan Bell? I didn't know him, I said. Now, let me nudge your memory. You were in the same class at Eastern Road Primary. That's going back a bit, isn't it? Good friends, more like brothers, I'm told. Perhaps. Lots happened. Indeed. You married his ex-wife, brought up his sons. Where were you between 8.30 and 10.15 the night he died? In the anchor. I believe you were at Longfield House with Alan Bell. Why the hell should I be? Because he'd said there was nothing doing. Nothing doing about what? Oh, come on, you've had time to think. I told you, I didn't know him. Very well. I'd like you to come along with me. Now? Yes, Mr Stoner, now. I've been patient enough. Perhaps we'll get some truth out of you at the station. There he is. Oh, I've been worried about you. She let me off early. What'd you burn then? Uh, nothing. Some rubbish. You look poorly. What happened? Uh, what did they want you for? Have you seen the paper? No. The police expect to make an arrest very soon. In this neighbourhood. Well, it'll be a good thing when they do, won't it? Dora, I think they mean me. You? But why? You've no they, reason. They want to believe it is me. I'm the, the what is it? I'm go go to uh... scapegoat. <laughs> Look, I am a violent man too. I attacked Mister Lambert five years ago. That was an accident. Surely you oh, said. Look, when they're told by an English colonel something is so, they're not going to believe the gardener. Especially if he's German. Oh, that man hates you. Always has. Thinks the war never ended. God, and I hate him too. I'm scared, Dora. Scared to death, locked in a cell, the dark, the stench. Oh, now, don't be silly. It's not like that here. <laughs> How do you know? People die in cells, I have read. Police brutality. Oh, stop it. Calm down. <laughs> Nothing's happened yet. I thought when I replaced the knife, that would be it. No more questions. Knife? What knife? P pruning knife. Missing from its place in the rack over there that morning. Well, that's why you... But why? Dora, you're so stupid. I had to show them everything right, everything there in its place. 
Otherwise, it is me they suspect. And they do? Yes. I am a violent man. The colonel says so. It must be true. Look, I'm going to the inspector. I'll tell him everything. How you oh. felt that night. What you heard. No, no, no. We tell her nothing, you hear. Nothing at all. We have said enough. <laughs> I can't wait, Dora. What shall I do? Oh, no, stop shaking. <laughs> no one will hurt you. They will leave me in the dark. I shall hear the screams of the others. Oh, calm down now. Shh. Oh, I must answer it. All right. Tell them where I will be. In my garden. Right. Goodbye, little Dora. I'll feed the same. Yes? Oh, Mrs. Bell. Yes. Well, he's very upset. He's on his way now to his garden. He'll feel better, I think, when he's working. And she said, I've just seen the Colonel's car outside your house. It's so nice to have him back in the village. Any biscuits? Tins by your elbow. Now, what's it all about, Henry? Oh, custard creams. I can't stick them. Why was that man here again? Hilda, you do carry on. I, I thought we agreed that the three monkeys, remember? Oh, my God, I've been so naive. I've realised now those odd cards from Clive Lambert aren't so innocent. You're all in it. Well, don't treat me like a child. Tell me. Tell you what? Is it drugs? <laughs> you think I'm crazy? Alan Bell thought so, I'm sure. What Alan Bell thought's not important. He's dead. I know. That's beginning to worry me, too. Hello? Dora? No, I just assumed he was around somewhere. Uh, hold on a moment. Uncle, did you see Ernest this afternoon? Here? Yeah. Can't say I did. Why? Well, he's not home yet. She's worried. He's a man of habit. Dora? No, neither of us have. But he may have been in the potting shed. Look, if he's not home in another hour, let me know. And don't worry. Yes, but things happen. It's not late. I'm sure he's all right. Strange, though. You know what I think? He's gone on the run. Burgess. Oh, Mrs. Bell. I see. Oh, but he hasn't had quite a routine day, has he? Oh. Well, it's only, what, half six? Well, he's in the pub, probably. Oh, you have? Well, all right, if he's not home by eight or so, better give me a ring and we'll look out for him. Pollack. Ernest Pollack, five foot seven, slim build, grey receding hair, wearing blue denims, check shirt, blue wool hat, leather waistcoat. Speaks of the German accent. Watch how you go with him. He might be in a pretty agitated state. He's wanted for further questioning in connection with the murder of Alan Bell. Mr. Stoner, you told me you didn't know Alan Bell, never met him or corresponded. That's so. Read the P.S. to that letter from Alan Bell to his sister. Who do you think I bumped into? Go on. A while back, Donald Stoner, of all people. A bit of a rolling stoner pun like yours truly these days but he's been a real friend so you'd been a real friend to a man you never knew oh come on i'm going to find out you know you might just as well tell me now uh, i was working in london i ran into him in leicester square one night and he was pretty well done uh, no job hungry even been in some sort of trouble i uh, i let him stay with me Share my room. That's all. How long did he stay? A while, some months, I believe. He used to write all the time. Did he pay or help out at all? I didn't do it for that. And later you married his ex-wife, brought up his sons. Oh, he had quite a debt to repay. I told you I didn't do it for payment. So why the hell not come out with it in the first place? I mean, what's wrong, for God's sake, in befriending your old school pal? He'd been murdered. I... I didn't want to be involved. Well, you are, Mr. Stoner. Yes? I 
I see. All right. Thanks. And that's all for now. I can go? Not yet. You're helping us. You stay. According to a communique just issued, a hundred of the rebel forces have been killed. The body of Ernest Pollock, gardener to Alan Bell, the murdered crime writer, was recovered this morning from the river at Barston. His body was spotted by a group of children on a nature walk from Eastern Road Primary School. The strike of air control officers has been stepped up, and now all flights to and from the continent... Oh, Henry, I feel most upset. Poor Ernest, he so loved his garden. The matter is being investigated, that's all I can say at the moment. I told you, didn't I? A kraut. They cause all the trouble. Get a search warrant. Let's hope we can find the knife over there. I must go to Dora. He kissed me goodbye. Said I'll feed us in. I didn't even look round as he went out the door. Thirty-five years we've been married. Always together. I don't know what I shall do. It wasn't easy sometimes. He'd had treatment. Didn't help very much. He was always scared of them. Scared of the uniform. Scared of the dark. That's why he wouldn't tell. We said enough, he said. We tell them nothing. <laughs> and now look what's happened. <laughs> wouldn't tell them what, Dora? <laughs> tell me. The night Mr. Bell died, he went up there about the book. He was obsessed by that book. She's sure that's all he heard. So she says. Long time no see. <laughs> An expression your husband used? Occasionally. To someone he didn't care for, perhaps. A kind of false bonhomie. <laughs> And the knife business. I wonder why Ernest lied. To avoid questions. Everything in its place. This overwhelming fear of the police. How soon do you think I can see Dora? She's still very upset. I doubt if you'll get any more. Perhaps. It's surprising sometimes. Well, it seems pretty certain now your husband took the knife from the tool rack that evening. But why? To threaten someone he didn't care for, perhaps? My husband had a very quick temper, but he wasn't a violent man, Inspector. He was on a manslaughter charge in 1967. Alan killed a man? Good God, who? Well, we're waiting for the details. You're sure no one else knew your husband was here alone, other than the Pollacks and your agent? As far as I know. I see. The note. Nothing doing. Why leave it lying around? He was appallingly untidy. And if he decided to see the man, Stoner, was it, instead? And persuade him to stop pestering? Could be. Or maybe he wanted to put the fear of God into earnest. Who knows? Everything's conjecture. Certainly we found nothing at the Pollack's cottage. Other, that is, than the remains of your husband's gardening book. In the kitchen boiler. What? Ernest burnt the lot. Here we are. February 26th, 1967. Alan Bell, writer, 35, no fixed address, charged at Bow Street. Mm. With the manslaughter of Ronald Albert Wyman, doorkeeper at the Connaught Hotel Bayswater, over a matter of a £25 gambling debt. In the ensuing fight, in the Barlow Arms Hammersmith, Wyman fell and struck his head, died ten days later, no living relatives. Ex-regular soldier, 57th Field Artillery. Hmm. That doesn't help very much. Pilot? Yes, please. I think I'll see if Mrs. Pollack's feeling up to having a word. I'll beat her as any said. Kiss me goodbye. If I'd known it would be the last time. Mrs. Pollack, I'm deeply sorry. Believe me. Murder as you are. Hounding him. Believing the lies of that man. You killed him. But I've a job to do. And if your husband had come to me right away... You don't know what you'd lived through. 
He was frightened to death of the uniform, frightened of questions, frightened of you. Listen now. He went to Longfield House that evening. I've already told Mrs. Bell. Did he drive over in the Mini? He never drives at night. So he cycled over, heard Alan Bell's voice. Long time no see. Now, was there anything else? Now, think. Think hard. Anything he even thought he saw. Well? Yeah? He did say... I couldn't tell her. He had a strong feeling. Almost certain he was. It was that man. The colonel. Her uncle. Hello? Is Inspector Tandy there? Burgess. He'll know me. Jim? Ah, long time no see. <laughs> How is it down in the salubrious Tufnell Park? Oh, bogged down as usual? I hope so. Look, there's a, a Colonel Ferguson, two S's, lives up your way, a Grenville Court. Well, I'm interested in his whereabouts last Thursday afternoon and evening. Yeah, it's just a routine thing, really, probably wasting your time. Oh, I, I got a strange one here, but you know how it is. I've got to turn all the stones. Yeah, perhaps you'd ring me back sometime. Thanks, Jim. Oh, Jean's fine. And Molly? Now, Mr. Stoner, you've got two hours to account for after leaving the anchor that night. I told you. I'm I suggesting didn't... you went to Longfield, knowing Alan Bell was in the house on his own, no. and killed him. I'd no reason to kill him. No? sheltered him when he was down and out, married his ex-wife, brought up his sons, worked your guts out in the carpet shop, and suddenly he's eight miles up the road. Richard's creases. So what? So you demand what you think's your right. And because he won't play ball, there's the knife. What knife? The one you killed him with. I didn't. It's not true. He put off a trip to Paris, faked a stomach upset to see you because you'd been pestering the life out of him. I hadn't. Long time no see, he said when he came to the door. You're making it up. Come in, have a drink, and when he turned his back... Come on, tell me. Where is it? If I was after him for his money, well, why the hell should I kill him? Because you knew there was nothing doing. You've got it all wrong. Okay. Put me right. You did arrange to meet Alan Bell at his house on Thursday night. But I didn't go. Why? I felt scared. I, I didn't trust him. I knew he killed a man once. Well, why not think about that before? I can't explain. It's just... When I got to the gates, I, I drove past. Oh, come off it. You're saying you arranged to meet him that night just to drive past his gates? Well, where'd you go? Not back home. Well, I'll tell you. You drove in those gates and you know it to kill him. Oh, I didn't. I drove past. It's the truth. All right, we'll say you drove past. Where to? I don't know. Yes, I do. Um, towards Felsted. Pulled off in a lay by in Halifax. And then? Oh, shall I tell you? You thought Alan wouldn't hurt an old pal now, would he? And he's loaded, might never get the chance again. Times are hard, and money won, like it always does. You turn back, yes? Yes. And? The lights were all on downstairs, and a dog was howling. I rang the bell, I waited. He didn't come, so I walked round the side, the French window. I looked in, he... He was lying there. Blood. He was obviously dead. What time? I don't know. Half past nine, maybe. Before ten? Sure, before ten. Why not ring the police? I knew if you found out I'd had a date with him, I'd be in real trouble. Well, we have found out. And, Mr Stoner, you're still lying. His wife rang him from Paris just after ten, and he was still very much alive. Sergeant, the usual arrangements for Mr. Stoner. He's our guest for the night. You can't. I... 
I've got right. I, I, I've done nothing. You'll probably want to ring your wife. There's a phone out there you can use. OK, Mr Stoner? No, he's not OK. Hey, you, Inspector. It's a message from Tuckman Park. Oh. Well, well. Well, we'd better see Uncle first thing. Inspector, this is nonsense. My car was in its parking space all of Thursday, and I was there in my flat. Yes, the porter said he saw your car, and lights on inside. So there you are. Are you engaged in any business activities with Clive Lambert? Property, antiques, buying or selling? Of or... course not. Clive's in Spain. Yes. He rang you from Bilbao Thursday evening. Couldn't get a reply. Finally left an urgent message with the porter for you to ring him. Sure, I got it. Something personal. When did you get it? When I picked it up off the mat, after having a snooze. Didn't hear the phone? A bit deaf in my right ear. Guns, you know, I was artillery. Probably sleeping on the other side. With the lights on? Mm, often do, after a drink. When did you last see Alan Bell? It must have been back in late May or June when I came down. How did you know he was alone there Thursday night? I didn't. How could I? Well, it's been suggested that his visitor that night could have been you. <laughs> Whoever suggested it must be off his head. He was in Paris with Harriet, as far as I knew. And I was home in Grenville Court. Well, certainly your car was there and your lights on. Did you say artillery? I did. What regiment? 57th Field. 57th Field? Yes. 25 pounders. Was that all? Yeah, thank you, Colonel. For now. <clears throat> Fifty-seventh field, Charlie. Interesting. How come? The manslaughter case. Wyman, same regiment. Well, life's full of coincidences. Yeah, all the same, you better look into it. Now <laughs> oh, we've certainly got a right bunch here. There's one thing in common, though. All trying to fool a hard-working policeman. Except Mrs. Bell. Oh, I'm not so sure. She's cagey, holding something back. Probably of no interest when I find out. But I shall. I thought the damn business was over with Pollack. They're holding someone. It's in the paper. He didn't say. Cagey bastard, no. Fergie, Alan faked that stomach upset. Faked? To be here, to meet someone. Good God. How do you know? The post-mortem. He had a date? With his killer. That's the theory. Who the hell, I wonder? Someone who didn't like him? Well, I didn't like him. Phony pacifist ideas. And where would they all be if it wasn't for us? The finest men I've ever known... Fergie, stop listening to the bugle. Sorry. The thing is, I had a bit of a shock myself last week. Chap used to be my driver, salt of the earth. Killed in a stupid pub brawl some years back. Should never have lost touch. Blame myself, really. Well, let's have a drink. A nice long gin on the terrace. <laughs> Overlooking the swimming pool and the three and a half acres and the stable. All beautifully isolated that you chose for us. You know, you really ought to buy some horses. I'd teach you to ride. And Harriet, when you start again, writing, I've had quite a life. We can make an interesting partnership. I'm serious. Think about it. Henry, have you seen... They're holding a man for Alan Bell's murder. Look. No, oh, not Pollack after all, then. Oh, I never thought it was. But I'm so relieved. Why? What was Pollack to you? Relieved it's not you. <laughs> Why should I want to kill Alan Bell? Well, he knew too much. He could have stopped your activities. Well, he won't now. So let's go on enjoying the good life and live it at that. Yes, we have, but no charges yet. Really? When? Well, well. Oh, sure, but you never know. Thanks, Jim. Keep digging. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in touch. Inspector? Ah, Charlie. Tandy just called. A mini. White. J registration has been reported missing by a Major Henderson of Muswell Hill. Mm. Last used it Wednesday night. How about this? It's the Major's second car. 
and he lends it from time to time to an old army pal when his merc's in for service. <laughs> Colonel Ferguson. War coincidence? As I said, the world's full of it. Anyhow, Tandy's got a search underway. Ah, you can't beat a Devon policeman. Meanwhile... Hello? Speaking? Yes, of course, Inspector. I looked at my watch. It was just after ten. Oh, yes, quite sure. Oh, just a minute. Oh, what a fool I am. It was French time. They're an hour ahead of us. That's right. Nine o'clock over here. Not at all. Mr Stoner, you said you drove past the gates of Longfield House towards Felstead, pulled off the road and had a fag. Any other cars in the lay-by? Lovers? Someone doing appeal? I can't remember. I, things on my mind. Just a minute, though. There was a lorry along the end, a, a big one. No lights. Oh, any idea what sort? Uh, English? Foreign? Off the boat? Could have been French. Could have been French. Or, uh, no, uh, Spanish. And, uh, Hold on, there, there were headlights. Th that's right. A car pulled up alongside, a chap got out, oldish guy, small white beard. Good God, we laid carpet there last year. Burther, good stuff. The attic of all places. Bloody great telescope. Glued to the box, weren't we, Hilda? Six o'clock onwards. Commander, we're holding a suspect. Yes, yeah, so we read. Uh, we don't, as a rule, disclose identity until a charge has been made, but... Uh... His name's Stoner, Donald Stoner, Flynn's Carpets. Stoner? But he laid our carpet in the attic. Commander, did you pull into Felsted Lay-By last Thursday evening between nine and half past? I just told you, Inspector, I was here. Donald Stoner maintains he saw you with a Spanish lorry. Oh, not me, I swear. Now, look, I, I don't give a damn if that's your supply of Bacardi and Castellas. I'm holding a man on suspicion of murder, and if what he says is true, it might possibly help him. I'm sorry. Mrs. Bell? Burgess again. You said your husband had a hunch Commander Morgan knew a thing or two about smuggling, but uh, nothing really specific. Well, if possible, I'd like something specific. Yes, this is a murder investigation, Mrs. Bell. You know as well as I do that apparently irrelevant information can sometimes be useful. And... Yes, of course he's a friend, but... Yes? Go on. Where? Could you repeat that? Transportes Gonzales. Ah. Oh, and, and, and Mrs. Bell, the Colonel's still with you? Pick in late strawberries. Very nice. If this Stoner chap's innocent, Hilda, he'll get off without help from me. But he doesn't reveal anything just to say it was you. And it was, wasn't it? The lorry driver could have been asking the way. Hilda, we were watching the box. We said so. Think they're daft? If I open my mouth... Look. Do you want to see everything snatched away from us? Visit me in jail of a Sunday for the few years I've got left? All right. But I have shut my eyes for too long. You must tell me now. What is it? Diamonds. Uncut diamonds one way, small arms the other. I'm in it up to here. All three of us. Rich, too. More than ever you dream. I can't lose it. Don't ask. Oh. Where are you going? To the sea. Look at the boats. Calm me down. Oh, do be careful. And don't be too long or I'll worry. Harbour Police. Burgess. That's right. Look. I'm interested in a Spanish freight lorry. Transport is Gonzales. Arrived at the port, I believe, last Thursday evening. Any idea when it's leaving? Or if it has already? Yeah, oh, hang on. 
Now, what's on your mind, Charlie? Well, I'm just wondering if we aren't getting sidetracked with all this. After all, it doesn't really give Stoner an alibi. That's true, but I can't let it go. Could be a tie-up between this and the urgent message from Lambert. The night Alan Bell was murdered, remember? Yeah, that's so. And Alan Bell had seen the commander with the Spanish lorry. In any case, customs are sorted out. Yes? Leaves tonight. Look, there's a possibility it may be carrying illegal cargo. Might be worth your while to investigate. Perhaps you'll let me know any results. I hope there's not going to be a storm. My dear, I'll protect you from the wrath of the gods. Here. <laughs> Dutch courage. Thanks. I was thinking of Dora over there on her own. She's terrified of lightning. Don't ask me to go to Dora. You know, Ernest came here that night. Heard Alan say to his visitor, long time no see. Who told you? Dora, after he died. Did he see the visitor? Hear anything else? No, nothing. Just that. Long time no see. Someone he hadn't seen in years, probably. On the other hand, the sort of thing Alan might say after three days. Or three months. Let's have another. <laughs> Not for me. I'm sorry, Inspector. I thought you'd gone ages ago. Oh, come in. Brood in, that's all. You know, I've never seen them together, Harriet and Uncle. I think it might just be worth our while. Interesting about the Wyman affair. She knows it was her husband killed him. No. All the same, I have a hunch she's hiding something. There's a question I'd like to ask her again with the colonel there. See after her, do you think? No doubt at all. He aims to be husband number three. How come he wasn't husband number two when they were both 15 years younger? Well, my friend, she wasn't rich then. <laughs> Someone's late for bingo. Reported four car pile up at the Felsid roundabout. Better bring them both in. Be chaos at this hour. Oh, and Harry, you'll need lifting gear the lot. Burgess. Jim, hello. No kid. Incredible. We'll get Forensic onto it first thing. Nice work, Jim. Thanks a lot. Bye. Major Henderson's Mini. Found in a back street in Brixton. Not intact. Enough, I hope, for our purposes. Now let's pop over to Longfield. I'll give Harriet a call first. Hello? Speaking? Yes, Inspector, he's here. I'm listening. Stop it! Yes. All right, I, I will. No, I've got it. I'm to say two things. Ronald Wyman's death... Wyman? Your old driver. Oh, what the hell's he mean? Happened years ago, dead and buried, he knows that. But, Fergie, surely you said you only found out last week. And you'll be glad to know Major Henderson's mini's been found. Who's Major Henderson? <coughs> Fergie? Are you all right? Uh, the storm, perhaps. Or the strawberries. <laughs> perhaps I'll get a breath of fresh air. Easy, we're coming to the roundabout. What a mess. <laughs> Why are car drivers such lunatics? Hey, hey, look. The remains of a jag. That's right. The white beard. Good God, it is. The commander. Mrs. Bell, I was hoping to see you with Colonel Ferguson. He's in the garden. He suddenly didn't feel very well. You gave him the message? Yes. He's hopped it. Oh, don't be silly. Fergie? Fergie! He can't be far. We hope. Perhaps it was dangerous to let him know. Mrs. Bell, I've asked you before. Who else beside the Pollacks and your agent knew your husband was alone here the night he died? The man you're holding, perhaps. To your knowledge. Did Colonel Ferguson know? For God's sake, it was your husband. He phoned 
Wednesday night to wish me luck. The Colonel? Yes. I told him then. Alan wasn't coming with me to Paris. And you've kept it from us. Maybe cost Ernest Pollack his life. Why? Because I think all along I've known and didn't want to face. Don't you see? He knew my mother. All my life he stood for something marvellous and fine. What time does that boat leave? 8.15. Right. Away we go. We'll start the search from there. Transportes Gonzales may well have a smuggled military cargo aboard. <laughs> Too late. Just about to leave. Blast. I wonder if the lorry got on. It was just a hunch. Here, look over there. Under the lights. Sorry, mate. Obstruction. Open up. Where are you, Sam? Come on, now. Out you get. Why, you cannot do this. I am missing my mouth. There'll be another. I am hurt here, Charlie. Keep your eyes on the back of the lorry. There he is. There's our boy. Ferguson. Colonel Ferguson. I'll get him. Well, watch it, Charlie. Go right. But watch it. Oh, good God, the man's crazy. He's heading for... No! Christ! He'll be in the screws. Oh, my God. In Long Time, No See, by Joan Sadler, Inspector Burgess was played by Michael McStay, and Harriet Bell by Jean Trend. Alan Bell, Steve Hodson, Dora Pollack, Sheila Reed, Ernest Pollack and Ramos, Ronald Herdman, and Fergie by Philip Voss. Henry and Hilda Morgan were played by Michael Miller and Lisa Daniele, Elaine and Donald Stoner by Elaine Mitchell and Hugh Dixon, B.C. Fuller, Miranda Forbes, the police sergeant by Alex Jennings, and the radio announcer and harbour policeman Patrick Keeley. Long Time, No See was directed by Margaret Ettall. <laughs>